We've seen a number of major technological developments in 2024, whether it's the ability to use your electric vehicle to provide backup power into your home, or Tesla setting a new standard for home storage with the Powerwall 3. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five solar technology trends in 2024, and make sure you watch till the end where I'm gonna give you my thoughts on where I think we're going from here. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top five solar technology trends in 2024. Now, the first one is a technology that allows you to use your electric vehicle as a home backup battery, and in some cases, tie it in with your solar power system as well. Now you see, for many years, the cost of electric vehicle batteries has been falling and the capacity of electric vehicle batteries right now are several times that of your average home battery. You know, right now a Tesla Model S has roughly seven times the capacity in its electric vehicle battery than a single Tesla Powerwall home battery has. And so for, for that and many other reasons, people that have chosen to make the investment of purchasing an electric vehicle would like to be able to tap into that battery that is contained within the vehicle and use that as part of their home solar and storage system. Now, this technology is called bi-directional EV charging, which means that when you have the electric vehicle plugged into the home, not only can you charge the vehicle using solar power or just using normal utility power, but in certain circumstances, you can actually pull energy out of the electric vehicle battery to use for secure backup power in the home. Or in certain cases, you may actually wanna pull from the vehicle battery and sell it to the utility if there's peak demand and the utility company is willing to pay you a price premium for that energy that you have. So this bi-directional EV charging means that solar and your vehicle are no longer isolated systems. Now they can be treated as part of a more integrated hybrid home renewable energy system. Which leads me to the second trend, which is thinking about solar as its own isolated system or maybe solar with a battery to looking at it as a whole home electrification project. And that whole home electrification could include solar, battery storage, electric vehicle charging, intelligent load control, generators, and other smart products all tied in working as one unified integrated system. So we talked earlier about bi-directional EV charging where your vehicle is not just its own appliance, but the vehicle when it's interfaced with the home presents itself as another battery that the home energy system could use. Now that could mean that we wanna charge the battery from solar, uh, could me mean we wanna pull from the battery to avoid having to purchase from the power company at peak rates, but whatever the use case is, it's one integrated system. We're gonna be thinking about this one whole home integrated electrification system as opposed to isolated systems. Now, of course, your home heating and cooling is part of that equation as well. And so your electric heat pump could be directly powered from your solar or battery system, uh, or could be intelligently controlled by your intelligent load control system, uh, again, for purposes of avoiding uh, peak rate penalties, uh, or just to improve the overall energy efficiency of the home. By the way, if you have an electric vehicle already and you're thinking about tying it in to a broader home solar or electrification system, leave a comment down below. Let us know which model you have and what equipment you're considering. Now this leads me to the third trend, which is what I call convergence onto a single platform. You know, back in the day when I got started in solar about 13 years ago, it was common for us to mix and match individual components from different manufacturers. So we might have solar panels from one company, an inverter from a different company, pair that with batteries from a different company, and a monitoring solution that might come from a fourth company. And so part of our job was to put all those systems together and get everything talking together properly. But the trend that we're seeing in 2024 is convergence onto a single platform, meaning a, a single manufacturer to provide all of those major system components and a single software platform, a single app, so you can track everything in one unified place. So if we're talking about what are the leading platforms right now in 2024, well, of course you have Tesla based around the Tesla Powerwall battery inverter. You've got Enphase, you've got SolarEdge, uh, and then you have some other inverter manufacturers that are out there that still allow some level of interoperability. Uh, Solark is probably the first that comes to mind in that category where you can pair it with a third-party battery. But if you're talking about the majority of the US market share, 
between Tesla, Enphase, and SolarEdge, the trend is to keep everything on their, their equipment and their monitoring app, and that way you have consistency of installation support and consistency of user experience. You don't have to worry about one manufacturer's product talking to the other because everything is running on the same software platform. Now, the fourth trend is something that came about with the release of the Tesla Powerwall 3 earlier this year, and what we saw Tesla do was to build the solar inverter and the battery storage into a single appliance. So the Tesla Powerwall 3 battery is not just a battery, it is a battery and a solar inverter and technically a solar charge controller as well, all built into a single appliance. Now in the past, we've shied away from designs like this because the idea is that it's a central point of failure. But on the flip side of the argument is that having the battery and the inverter and the charge controllers all factory integrated in a single appliance really cuts down on the installation time and the installation complexity. And that's been one of the real drags on adoption of solar and storage technology is that many of the installers just aren't able to do it profitably. They're not able to install solar with battery storage as profitably as they have been able to install solar panels only in the past. And I've spoken to a number of installers who would tell me off the record that, hey, Joe, if, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't really want to install any batteries. But since that's where the market's going, that's where the technology's going, we feel we have to offer it so we don't get left behind. So with Tesla releasing this new integrated battery inverter design, I'm expecting that other manufacturers will copy this because of the benefits that I mentioned earlier, which is that now you have a solar and battery storage solution that can be installed as predictably, as profitably as a solar only installation of the past could be. Which leads me to trend number five, and really it's more of, more of a question than a trend, which is do we still need module level power electronics? Now, back in the day, solar used to be installed using central inverters or string inverters, where all the solar panels were wired together on the roof and then one or two two circuits or strings would be brought down from the roof to a central inverter at ground level. But about 14 years ago, we saw the introduction of module level power electronics. And what module level power electronics, the, the first generation of which were micro inverters. So instead of having a central inverter at ground level, you had a small inverter, literally a small inverter underneath each individual solar panel. And this provided a few benefits. Number one is you now have module level shade mitigation meaning that if shading were to negatively affect the performance of one solar panel, it would not negatively affect the other solar panels in that system. So basically each solar panel can now operate as its own independent power source. Of course, the other advantage is now you can monitor each individual solar panel or each individual microinverter. And so homeowners like that just for, as far as a user feedback, uh, but also installers like it because if there ever was a problem with one of the devices, you can pinpoint exactly on the site map exactly where the problem is. You don't have to pick up and check each individual connection. Of course, there's also some safety benefits with module level power electronics in compliance with the rapid shutdown. And what the rapid shutdown rule is, is essentially, if the firefighters come to your house and they pull off the electric meter to shut down utility power to the house, the high voltage from the solar panels has to get disconnected up to within about 10 feet of the solar array. And so the module level power electronics inherently provided that capability as well. Now, more recently, we saw the introduction of DC optimizers uh, from SolarEdge in particular, and the DC optimizers essentially offered the best of both worlds in terms of the, the speed of installation, the ease of installation of the old string inverters, but still with the panel level optimization and panel level monitoring and rapid shutdown that you got with the micro inverters. Now, the question that we as an industry are tackling with again is, do we even need module level power electronics anymore? Tesla certainly doesn't think so, and they've gone all in on the integrated central inverter with battery storage on the Powerwall 3 based systems. And again, I expect other manufacturers will imitate this design. So I think we are at a point in the industry where we really need to ask ourselves, um, are MLPEs needed? Uh, and if so, in which scenarios are they better? And in which scenarios are more of a centralized DC coupled architecture going to be a better fit? Okay, so where are we gonna go from here? Well, I think one trend that I'm seeing, and it really has to do more with the solar business model than it has to do with the, any particular technology, but I think the idea that you have a solar contractor, a separate solar finance company, and then the actual homeowner or the system owner that contracts directly with a solar contractor, I think that model is going away. 
Uh, I think what you're going to see in the future is that homeowners are going to sign up with a particular solar finance company, and then that finance company is going to choose which contractors are best to perform the work. And the reason for this, folks, is that we've seen a number of contractor business failures in the past 18 months. And I don't think anybody expected the failure rate to be that high, uh, the most recent of which, of course, is SunPower. Now, if you haven't seen our previous video on is SunPower about to collapse, go back and watch that previous video where we talk about some of the factors leading to solar business failures. But every time you have a solar business failure, they tend to leave behind orphaned systems. Now, when I say or orphaned systems or abandoned systems, what I mean is a homeowner purchased the solar power system with the assumption that they were getting a 20 or a 25 year warranty and the contractor is going to keep that system healthy over the entire term of the warranty which in many cases matches with the terms of the financing. Well, if you have a solar system that malfunctions, let's say five years into that term, but the homeowner still has 20 more years of payments to make on their loan or on their financing, the finance company sort of finds themselves in a position where they need to step in and provide maintenance service or repair service for that solar system or risk the loan going into default because the homeowner doesn't want to make payments on a malfunctioning solar system. So I think there's going to be a transition from solar as a one-time construction slash installation business to more of solar as a service business where you might think of uh, an air conditioning or a plumbing contractor today where that, that contractor's business is not based solely around selling and performing new installations, but they actually have a pretty steady backlog of service work to keep these orphan systems online and maintained uh, to keep homeowners functional. So this has been a brief chat about solar technology trends in 2024. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you see here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming up, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner, if you're in the process of looking at different solar power and battery options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote or maybe if you already have a price quote and you just need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the best equipment and getting the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there, set up a call with a solar expert, uh, or just use our free online quote tool so you can See how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.